Okay, I'm not telling you guys to stay together before marriage. I'm not telling you that. However, <laughs> the real problem came when you actually stay together. You know, so it's like, uh, it's one of those things where it's like you still do not really know your person until you start moving in with them. And now you can't go to your house, he can't go to his, and you actually got to come home to each other. Look, knowing what I know now about marriage and how to choose a mate and what to look for in a mate, I could say now he was not the man for me even then, but I was blind. I was blinded. I didn't see it because I wanted what I wanted. Then, you know, we both had people in our ears. So you know how that go. What's up, Bravehearts community? This is Sean Heineman, your premier pre-engagement coach, back with another segment of It's Scared to Your Mary, wanting you to love fearlessly. This is the beginning of the Life After Divorce series as promise people have been asking about it when is it going to drop who you going to have on so today our special guest is going to kick off brandy yates how are you doing brandy she's no stranger to the show what's going on brandy? uh i'm good i'm good uh, i'm tired long day but i am ready to get into this episode you know i like you know i like these talks so i love these talks especially when it comes to relationships experience moving forward um i i love your name especially because as a divorcee you know i'm looking to be remarried i'm um you know not scared no more like <laughs> used to be but so i'm ready to talk and you say she ain't never scared okay <laughs> first question um and of course we're talking about going through you know when you were married and stuff in the infancy stages because like, i kind of want to get into the whole conversation because you never know who's going through something right now maybe they're you know maybe contemplating the divorce so how did you and your your ex-husband how, how did y'all meet um so keep in mind everything that i say of course it's not a one for all um, but I am going to be very as honest as I can be. For sure. Um, so we met, we knew each other from high school, but we didn't, we didn't mingle in high school. So we really met and mingled like during our college. So we went to like a, a, a smaller, you know, college and we started mingling and it was strictly on friendship. The, the funny part and the odd part about it is that we didn't even date. So we started out strictly as friends and then we ended up getting into church. So I'm going to, I'm going to stop it there and then go on and let you, you know, do your thing. So imagine. Well, well, I want to, I want to, I want you to be able to talk about that as well, as far as okay. with church, because I, I think okay. that's very important. Okay. Well, let's, let's, so I am a believer. So everything I say, you know, it's not me attacking the church. So right. if you listen to this, don't take it personal. It's not, it's not attacking God. It's not attacking the Bible, Jesus, the religion. It's not attacking them. This is just my experience. So anyhow, so we never dated. We just were friends. Um, and the crazy part about it is like, I was going through a lot of things in my own personal life. And so him and his mom, and they were there for me through my roughest time. And so we were really close friends. And I believe once I got into church, because he's always been a church guy. But once I, I I didn't, I didn't come from that family. We was we was ghetto, we was trauma, we was a bunch of stuff, right? And we weren't even thinking about God. So I always had this idea, you know, this fantasy land, you know, once I once I become grown, you know, God gonna get me from this mess, um, this family I'm from, and he gonna send me my my knight in shining armor. So then I met my friend who was in church so it's it's we got into ministry i started learning i started growing in the word you know i, I create i came into a family that i never had um with the church mm -hmm. not to go into too much um detail like this it's because it's a long story but we ended up getting into ministry together and i believe what i believe now i didn't see that then and i want to admit it then but what i believe now is that the idea that i had for myself you know, the fairy tale that I created, I felt like that mingled with a lot of the pressure from the church with matchmaking. Because, <laughs> you know, I, I don't know if you know, but you may know how church people do. 
I so, already know. You in ministry, oh, you know, you spiritual, you so wise, you so smart. Oh, and he do this, and he, you know, and it's like, and y'all already friends, and y'all just, y'all look fun together, and it just was a lot of mixing and mingling, and I feel like both of us were were pretty much, because we had an idea, you know what I'm saying? We had an idea of marriage. We had an idea of what, once we get married, do everything right by the Bible. No sex before marriage. We ain't do none of that. No sex before marriage. We felt like, you know, this is it. You know, he didn't, he wasn't trying to have sex with me. I want for him to have, so this gotta be God, right? Because we, we doing it right by the Bible. Then everybody in the church hearing from the quote unquote Holy Spirit, right? So it, it gotta be God, right? Anywho, so yeah, that's that's how we met. That's how we mingled and end up getting married. Mm-hmm. That's a short version. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Because there's a couple of questions I want to ask. Okay. What, what what made you say this this is the man for me? I feel like at that time, if I can look at it now, yeah. um, he was not the man for me. Mm-hmm. But at that moment, again, I was in my own traumas. I was in my own head. You know, this is what I want. He was a really great friend. I almost looked at him like the brother I never had, the uncle I never had. Like he filled all the roles of a of the male uh, perspective that you know I've never had. So it was a connection there. And then we were both in church and ministry. Uh, again, he he was smart. He was wise. He wasn't doing like forcing. You know how you know how y'all men is about hormones. So it was it was no sex before marriage. It just it just seemed like this was the man you know for me. Outside of church, though, outside of church, outside of being a friend, laughing and stuff like that, we didn't even really have nothing that's in common. So, you know, and I didn't see that at that time, because, again, when you're blinded by you looking at the scriptures and you hearing the church folks and everybody praying with you and, you know, you just you got this idea like this got to be God. You know, you tell people some stuff and then they mix it in like, oh, see, that's the Lord saying you know, X, Y, and Z, and you know me, again, I didn't grow up on church. And we grow up, this is all fresh and new to me. So to me, it's a new experience. I'm feeling good. I'm like, dang, I'm finally going to get a husband. So <laughs> I'm caught up in a mix. Yeah. So if I can look back now, saying that now he was not the man for me. He wasn't a bad guy. You know, mm-hmm. he didn't do anything abusive, anything like that. But look, knowing what I know now about marriage and how to choose a mate and what to look for in a mate, I could say now he was not the man for me even then, but I was blind. I was blinded. I didn't see it because I wanted what I wanted. Then, you know, we both had people in our ears. So you know how that go. Yeah, for sure. It's funny you say that because same thing with my ex-wife and I, like outside of church, looking back now, we really didn't have anything in common. <laughs> and it's no shade, you know, it's no right. shade to them, you know, and, and I try to tell people from my experience, because at first I was bitter. When it, you know, it all was going down. But the more I went on my journey and started learning myself, the more I started digging into my own relationship with God, praying, fasting, and things like that. I'm like, you know what? I can't even blame him. You know, I'm like, I can't even blame him. Like, I allowed myself to pretty much be, you know, smoothed on into the situation, manipulated, if you want to, for the, you know, better term, yeah. manipulated into a situation that I should have never you know, got myself in two. So we didn't have, and I, when they say marriage, I don't know if you heard that term, but when they say marriage shows what's in you, oh, it shows what's in you. And that's how I sort of seeing like, what the, we ain't got nothing in common? What we get married for? So. If we got nothing in common. I nothing get it. church. <laughs> yeah, I get it. Did, did you both do premarital counseling? We did. We went through our pastor um, and to do it. But here's the crazy part, even about that. I still, even doing that, I didn't feel complete. Like, I would even ask him, I would be like, do you feel like we learned something? Like, what do you think about that? Like, were we, like, did you feel that? Like, well, you know, men, you know, women always have feelings. <laughs> but for men, I'm just like, I don't feel, mm, you know, I don't feel a connection. I don't feel, oh my God, I'm excited to get married. I don't feel like I got that from the counseling and I don't know if it's because again at that time there were really nothing connecting us 
you know, on a deeper level outside of being, I don't know if that is what it was, but I mean, we did the counseling, but, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> how do you, how do you feel about, um, premarital counseling? Uh, especially, do you think you should go through your church or do you think maybe you should go just maybe to like a, a licensed professional or even if they have that option in a church, how do you oh. feel about that? I like that you said that. Um, and this is just my experience, but I do believe I do believe you should go through a licensed person. Uh, maybe a relationship counselor, you know, relationship therapist or something like that. I do believe that is the better route. And the only reason I say that again from experience is because I believe church is church. We go by them scriptures. And what's the goal? Get you married. Better to marry than to burn don't want you fornicating so it's like they they mind and heart is in the right place but i don't think the motive is in the right place and i feel like with the church and 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 this is just even from talking to other people who've been through like different churches not just my church that's went through it they pretty much kind of said the same thing it's almost like we do the scriptures you know we go through the scriptures what does god say about marriage? you know we do the logistics of it but they don't really dig into making you dig into yourself. Why are you getting married? You know, what have you learned about this person? What have you learned about yourself? Do you know, like, okay, if this happens, how will you handle that? Like, what what scenarios have y'all discussed? Like, it don't get into the deep depth of the behind the scenes marriage. You know what I'm saying? It, it kind of talks about the, the surface scripture level so that you can kind of look like, the marriage that God wants you to look like to people, you know, I don't know if I'm saying it right, but it's, it's like, I do feel like you should go to, if the church have it cool, but more of a relationship therapist or a relationship counselor, like somebody that's legally certified in some type of psychological um, degree or something, not, you know, that spirit, I feel like do that first, but you also can do the ones at the church, but I, yeah, as a secondary though i don't feel like it needs to be primary i feel that i feel that and, and like you say because it's easy to you know husbands love your wives and you yes, know Christ love the church. Wives and they, yeah you know what i'm saying i and, and i get it because i don't believe in myself but like you say it's the deeper things that um those questions you know that hey maybe this ain't gonna work because <laughs> you know we having a serious conversation it might not work yeah, and this and this is not to combat scripture. It's not to combat, to, to combat the church, but this is what I feel like with that because that was one of them in there that that we went through. You know, you got to love her like Christ loved the church, and of course he was in church and ministry, so he understood it. But you got to think about the men who don't understand it, the men who are not spiritual, the men who are not going to church. They don't know what you're saying. They just saying yeah so they can get it over with. You know, they're not really connected like that. So. I feel like we lose them. We, we're not doing due diligence when we're doing that, you know, to those type of people. But we say that, but here's the thing with that. You can say love her like Christ loved the church. But let's be real. We are human. We are dealing with Christ ain't coming to us like our wife. And I'm just putting myself in y'all's shoes. Christ ain't going to come to y'all like the wife's going to come to y'all. You know, so it's like that ain't even a good example. Yeah. Because Christ ain't going to come to you with no attitude or no assumptions or, you know, uh, and and I'm not just in general, things that I'm saying. Christ ain't going to go through your phone. Christ ain't going to tell you when you're coming home, where your homeboy's at. Like, you know what I'm saying? So it's, it's almost like, uh, that hit the surface. That didn't, that's, that's your surface. That's not deep. That's not, it's not helpful. Yeah. No, it, no I, I hear you. And even, even <laughs> if, even if the people don't even have that personal relationship, you know what I'm saying? Let alone church. Um, but I get it. Um, Cause that, that's a whole conversation within itself. Right. Yeah. Yeah. At what point did you know there was trouble in paradise? Oh, when did it start? I want to say it started obviously with, uh, the honeymoon was good. We came home. We ended up, we bought our house pretty fast. Mm -hmm. So when we moved, so this is another thing too. Okay, I'm not telling you guys to stay together before marriage. I'm not telling you that. However, <laughs> 
the real problems came when you actually stayed together. You know, so it's like, uh, it's one of those things where it's like you still do not really know your person until you start moving in with them. And now you can't go to your house, he can't go to his, and you actually got to come home to each other. Yeah. And you actually got to communicate. So it started um, with our communication first. And it was like, again, I didn't grow up in church. I came into church at like 19, 20. He always grew up in church. So it got to the point where he wouldn't even communicate to me. He would run to the house of the Lord. Mm. So imagine the resentment I started having toward God. Mm. You know, and I'm like, this the husband? Like, God, this the man you gave me? Like, he ain't, we ain't going to talk every time we go. He's going to leave and go to the church? Like, what? So it. It started with the communication and it started early on. Um, we were married a total of six years, but we were separated like three of those years. Yeah. So, you know. Yeah. Do, do you feel because there's a, I won't say there's controversy around it, but there's a debate about should you live together with your significant other before marriage or vice versa like how do you how do you feel about that personally i do feel like it i mm -hmm. feel like i believe once you get engaged mm -hmm. you know once you know oh yeah uh, this this one i'm gonna be with we're gonna do that thing i feel like go ahead and move in once you're engaged because you've already this is who you want to be with right you right. start mingling because I think the, and I know the church doesn't, you know, because that goes with stacking up for the cane and all that. But let's be, yeah. let's be honest. You are, you're for the cane before you even moved in the house. So let's, let's be real here. So <laughs> you moving in or not moving in ain't stopping nothing. So, mm -hmm. right. so I do, I do feel like in the single or the boyfriend, girlfriend stage, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I do feel like y'all should be at each other's houses more, but I think once you finally engage, okay let's start mingling let's start looking for a house together apartment together or whatever let's start staying together in our engagement stage so you can kind of see kind of what's going on you get that feel of it versus you don't know and then also you married and now we just linked and now it's like you just threw yourself in you know you throwing yourself into something that you didn't you didn't gracefully go into you just boom this is what you're supposed to do because you married mm -hmm. so. yeah because there's um there's oh, there's so much to talk about in that, and I don't want to stay there too long. But yeah, yeah. I wonder sometimes is there like do people act different when they're uh, and I'm throwing my air quotes shacking up opposed to when they're actually married? I wonder if people kind of act different because and I have an opinion on that, but you tell me what right. you mean. And and I my look in my opinion is and you know I'm a life coach, look yeah. life and relationship coach, so um. Okay, so I do think there's a difference in between the way men think and the way women think about it. So I think women think that, that there will be a train, a change after you're married. You just it's gonna be a really good change once you get married and move in together. Men is kind of like there ain't really no change. Like I don't expect you to just drastically. If you weren't cooking for me before, I don't expect you to be cooking for me after. You know, so it's like. I don't think men look forward to a drastic change after you're married and moved in. I think women do. And that's where a lot of our disappointments happen. But um, it, that's just a difference in between the way men and women think about it. So, mm. no, I hear you. That's real. <laughs> <laughs> Looking back, what could you have done to, to keep your marriage? And what could you have done differently? Um, Looking back, from what I know now, I would not have gotten married that soon or to the person, you know, that I got married to. Um, I got married at 21, I believe. Mm -hmm. 21 to 22, the age of 21, 22. Um, I would not have gotten married that soon. I know some controversy behind that, but um, I wouldn't have got married that soon. And then I wouldn't have got married to that particular um, person. So it's really nothing that I can say that I would have done to keep it. Um, but I will say for those who have went my route or that's, you know, that's trying to get married, I will say, don't go into it thinking that another person is going to feel every void and the unhealed trauma that you had from like your childhood, teenage on up. 
-hmm. Don't go into it thinking that once you get married, that's going to fix all of that because it doesn't. It does none but bring it out even more. So. Totally agree with that. That is so real. So what did you do to heal after your divorce? How did how did Brandy find Brandy? What, what were some things that you did to, to heal? After I got done having my fits and my angers and cries and all of that, um, I started, because I was just church, work home, church, married life. Um, and then we ended up having a son after, you know, we got a year after we got married. So that's all I was focused on. Like I didn't have an outside life. So once I got through with my fits and being mad at God and, you know, blaming him and all of that. I started finding myself. So I started finding things that I actually like to do that I didn't even know that I like to do. So I would, I would, I started skating. I started taking myself to the movies. I would just go by myself to go eat. I would go window shop. Like I would just go in. So quote unquote, I would dream again, mm -hmm. you know, cause I felt like I had lost everything and wasn't no hope again. And I wouldn't find nobody else. Not that I couldn't, but it's just, I didn't want to go through that again. Like, you know, for me, it was like, what if I pick wrong again? You know, so I just took that time and I started finding myself. And I went through, I still went through a bunch of BS, a bunch of things of, you know, falling, hitting my head, making bad decisions. But during that journey um, of doing that, it's like the, again, the childhood trauma started coming up. It was just so many layers that I was hiding and that I thought the marriage had covered. So it was like once that was over, I didn't have nothing to cover it with again. It's like everything just started coming up from the surface inside, you know, internally to the point where I was like, you know what? And everybody would come to me for their problems. I, I look like I never had no problems. And I was like, you know what? Why is it that people feel like I don't got no problem? Like, why do they come to me about all of their problems? You know, they they trust me. They vent to me about everything, names, everything. And I'm like, and they like, you should be a therapist. I'm like, no. I can't even, you know, I don't tell them that, but in my head, I'm like, I'm jacked up. Like, I'm jacked up in there, and there's no way I can be a therapist. But then I started, I started praying and asking God, like, okay, why is these people coming to me? Like, they, it'd be people I'd be on the bus. Because when I, when I went through my divorce, I went and hit rock bottom. So we went through bankruptcy. We lost everything. So I'm having to find another car, a new house, just everything. So I'd be on the bus. I'd be walking and people would just, look at me and they're like man you got something it's something on you like an aura on you you just seem peaceful and then they just start telling me they business so i'm like what is this like i don't like it because my problems ain't even fixed but everybody you know come to me trying to tell me their problems like i'm just so put together so i started asking god to show me my purpose what is this why am i going through this and along the way i was looking into therapy um not not going to ther therapy but looking to being a therapist and I looked at the school, I'm looking at my age, I'm looking at my son, I ain't really got support, you know, to help me with him and stuff like that. So I'm like, I don't want to go through the schooling for being a therapist. Mm -hmm. But I was reading a lot of books. I'm a reader, so I read a lot of psychology books, mindset books. I was reading a bunch of stuff, listening to a bunch of stuff. And then it was to the point where I was like, you know what? Along that journey, life culture came up. And I'm like, what the heck is a life coach? So I started researching that. And I'm like, you know what? That is that is a route I can go that's similar to therapy without going through all of the, the long schooling and tests. So as I started going through that and researching, I started finding content. I thought YouTube, um, different podcasts. Again, I'm a reader, so books. The people that would come to, me, to, come to me with their uh, problems, I would, after I'm done with them, I would pray, okay, God, how can I help them? You know, what can I say to them? Like, I was just doing all of that on my own journey, taking it off of myself and actually embracing the fact that even though I felt like I was broken to the point where I was unusable, I'm like, okay, but I'm still here. So it's something that you got for me. So then I started just embracing that journey of talking to people, helping them, giving them advice. And believe it or not, along that journey of me giving them that advice, I would go home, I would cry, and I would, you know, just listening to what I said to them. And it was like a double-edged sword. So it was like I gave them that advice, but I had to go eat it later. You know, I had to eat that same sword that I, you know, gave to them. So that pretty much that's how I was able to heal by giving other people advice. Mm -hmm. Probably sound crazy, but that's that's how I was able to heal. So. No, that makes sense because uh, this it is. Does? No, no, it does <laughs> it because does. it's like 
it's like you learn as you teach. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But there's some of us that have a certain level of conviction that when we tell people stuff, we double back in our head. And maybe I don't know if I'm speaking for you, too, but I know for me, I'm like, am I doing that, too? Bingo. Bingo. That's and 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 that's the thing. I don't like to get into um oh I'm gonna go back to one of your tweets you did. And um I was at work, so I was I was thinking on my phone, but I saw your tweet come through. Um it said, I think it was a question and it it asked, Do you rather listen to single life coaches or married life coaches? I think. And I can't remember my exact response, but in in that in that thing. This is it shows me that people the titles matter more. And so people don't even listen to the information yet until they feel like they can relate to the title. I hate it. I hate it, but that's just how a lot of people's psychological mind is made is, you know, it's just made up. So with that being said, I'm like, okay, I'm not married, I'm divorced, but I know what God is doing. I know what his purpose is in me. I know the lessons I've learned and I know the advice that I can give. I know that the help that I can give. So I'm going to continue on because truth be told, what I'm saying to y'all, single, married, divorce, or whatever, what I'm saying to y'all, I'm eating those words just as much. I, I'm not just saying it because it sounds good. I got to go sit with that too. So it's like, I always got to be up to par because I, I was having a fit with God one day and I'm like, look, I don't want to do this no more because every time I got to tell them something, like you checking me and whooping me on, like I got to face that too, you know? So it's like, if you're, if you're not ready, if you're not ready to really sit in your own stuff, take the accountability and change for yourself, that advice you get, it's going to be empty for one. Cause people don't, you know, pe people are smart. They don't be like, you just saying it, saying it, you don't even live by that. You know? So it's like, uh, to your tweet the other day, so I'm like, I'm confident to call myself a life coach, even being serious, uh, a relationship coach, even being single. Because the information I know is solid. Like a lot of information I say, a lot of people that's actually married say the same thing. So, you know, I'm confident that I'm on the on the right path of learning myself so that I can give that same information out to help others heal and hopefully not go through the same thing that I went through yeah. with relationships. Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> No, I hear you. And, and no, one of the reasons I connected with you because your content was out of control. I was like, let me let me email her, you know, because. Yeah. Yeah. So, no, don't ever feel. I, I mean, I get it, you know, but. No, but it was a good. I like the point. I wish I won at work because I, I probably would have hopped like, hey, can we go on uh, get on the uh, what they call them on Twitter? The, uh, I know the you're video talking thing, about. The yeah. rooms or whatever they call it. <laughs> I wish I wouldn't work because I would have hopped on like this is good. Like I'm not afraid to have those conversations, you know, because again, like people, I'm divorced. You know, marriages, if you do the statistics, there's a lot of people divorced, especially the ones in the church. So it's like this is not taboo. We need to discuss it. And people need to be okay with this might sound bad, but people need to be okay with the divorce. Like don't a lot of us get married for the wrong reason. I can just say I did. I know Preach. I did. Preach. You know. And we say, we say, oh, let no man separate what God has joined together. You're absolutely right. What God joined together. It's a lot of things we joined together that he didn't join. So Preach. you can't use that spirit, you know, because because I questioned that too. When I got divorced, I'm like, God, you said, don't let no man separate what you joined together. And I started fast. I was, I was mad. And I'm like, why am I going through this? I'm mad. And like, he's taking me to different scriptures. And I'm looking here like, oh my God. You never told me to marry. You didn't tell me to marry him. My mind did. My fantasy did. The church people did. But you didn't tell me to marry him. And, you know, all things work together for the good, right? I mean, Ooh, you're yeah. wiser and you're smarter. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. you know, and God's we read still... parents, though. Like, we, we talk. You would never even think that we went through what, what we went through. Because we talk. We joke. We, like, say little crazy stuff to each other. Like, and neither one of us want to be back with each other. But it's like, I'm looking like, now how we can be real good friends even after that? Yeah. But it's the acceptance that, you know what? We weren't even supposed to be together. That's on, that's on us. That's not on God. Yeah. And that's maturity right there. Because a lot of times people think that when you divorce, it has to be this bitter kind of, you know, I hate you. I can't stand you. I hope you burn. You know, that whole thing. 
it doesn't always have to be like that. I think that just shows a sign of maturity. Uh, so, can I, go ahead. Can I ask you a question? Come on. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We're talking. okay. You know so, we're talking. <laughs> look, this is your show. I don't want to take over. But okay. With that being said, why do why do you feel like it's so much turmoil after a divorce? Like, why do you feel like people bicker at each other and hate each other so bad? Um, I think, man, I know this is gonna sound way left field. I think it's all about expectations, what we thought this person was going to be, you know, uh, and I've learned this time and, and it's, it's, I'm learning, I'm trying to turn the wheel in this area of my life. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to, and this might sound crazy. I'm trying to take away expectations from my wife now. Oof, we got to talk about that. Yeah. I mean, and not now, but like, it yeah. Just, we, yeah, yes, because. I can admit my ex. I I told you in the beginning it was my fantasy. Yeah. Like it was my fantasy. I placed on somebody that I never even had the conversation with to see what else outside of church that we had in common. Yeah. You know, so it was like that was an expectation I ran after. He ran after his expectations, and then we got into some mess. Yeah. But again, like you said, all things work to, together for the good of those. Who love God. Who, who love God and are called according to his, to his purpose. purpose. Yeah. So, yeah. Turn it into purpose. Yeah. It, it, you know, so now, and here you are a coach, right? Yeah. Yeah. You see what yeah. I'm saying? So you just, you know, we got to trust them. But I, I'm i trying to take away all expectations. Uh, and to me, real love is when you can actually don't have those expectations but because this person loves you so much they are willing to be sacrificial to make sure that you're good instead of you having these expectations like why you ain't make dinner tonight or and which is very hard right but if if you can take away those things so i try to be grateful in my approach so whenever my wife makes my plate or whatever she does for me i say thank you and that part right there, I like how you said that because, um, and again, these are things I feel like, even though we were married six years, separated three, so I still feel like I had a short-lived marriage. So a lot of things, you know, I learned, again, from my my failed experience, the yeah. things I put into my spirit to start learning, you know, watching other people having the conversations, I started learning these things. And I like how you said that because um, it, it'll be like stat going around, like, I'm not a... And they, and they talk about men when they saying this, uh, but they were like, I'm not applying a fish for swimming. Yeah. And I said, I get what I get it, but no, like you have to be appreciative. When you appreciate somebody, it goes back to the extra. I don't need to have an expectation. You know why? Because when I show you appreciation for what you do do, and when I have those conversations with you and not, I'm not beating you down. I'm not always pointing like, well, I do this and you don't, I'm not pointing out the bad all the time. But I, I express to you the things I would like. And we just, in this smooth conversation, I don't need an expectation because you're going to love me enough to so you be like, I hear you. I hear you. I, I'm going to change on my own. Because cause that's what expectation is. It's control. Yep. It's control. Like, I, I put you in this box. Now, we don't want to be put in boxes, right? Right. <laughs> my, our ex expectations put the other person in the box. You know, and I don't know about your wife, but now, you know, women are working now. So it's like, and, and, and this too, uh, this is what I'm learning even going forward. So uh, right now I'm not dating. I'm, I'm tired. So when I when I get back on the dating scene, this is my thing. I'm going to I'm going to put that up up front. You know, like hey, I'm working. You working? And I run a brand. We got to share duties. Yep. We got to you know we got to share house duties. I know I can't help you with a car, but guess what? I help I help pay somebody for the car. You know that way you ain't doing house duties and every duty that we say man got to do. Like we got to compromise. It ain't about I'm not into the um, what is it? The traditional roles anymore. Yeah. We're just not. We're just not there. Yeah. You know, yeah. at least not a hundred percent. You know, yeah. some things obviously the man will do. Some yeah. things a woman would do. Yeah. Simply because we're nurturers. Um, uh, but I, I just, I don't want. It's the expectation part for me. It's just when you put that on somebody, you're controlling. You're controlling their narrative, actually. Yep. Yep. You know, because you. Go ahead, go ahead. No, no, no. I was about oh. to say, no, I was about to say, true, you know, true love is allowing the person to be who they are and not who you think they should be. 
You know what I'm saying? And I had to learn that. Like it took me 15 years of marriage and going through yeah. a divorce to yeah. not trying to control people. So uh, I don't know if I answered your question or not. You know, we get to talk. No, no, you did. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel like you did. And then the way you went into all of this, yeah. Um, and 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 I like how you said that though, because I do. I honestly think that's what's going on. I think I think a lot of us are controlling the narrative of the other person, you know, and it's like I don't know if I don't even always want to say it's selfish, so to speak. Um, I think sometimes we don't even know that we're doing it, especially if we get away with doing it so long. Mm -hmm. I don't even know if we know that that's what we're doing. So that's what, you know, that's why I like these conversations because somebody can hear this and be like, dang, I think I kind of do that. Like he, like my, you know, my man or my wife never said nothing, but dang, I think I kind of do that. So then you on your own start to make adjustments without them even asking because you're running across content like this and it's like, oh, dang, I think I kind of do that. <laughs> Take the accountability, yeah. you know, so you don't end up divorced like me. <laughs> but, yeah. yeah. Uh, and divorce like me, right? I know. I get <laughs> no, I get it. It's it's the the yeah, the expectations and stuff like that, they're 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 killers. Uh, I was gonna ask you, I have one more question, actually, too. Um because okay. we get to talking. You were talking about when you were reading books and listening to podcasts. What is one book that stood out to you that made you say, Ooh, Brandy, I need to get it together, or you know, just self-reflection. Okay, so I read books differently. Um, I don't recommend you do this unless you can, but I read maybe about four or five books at a time. And I don't always finish them. I just, I just whatever day I'll see a book that I have my set of books that out, I got my bookshelf, mm -hmm. then I got the books that I'm working with. So it's just, I'll sit down for a minute and I'll just grab one of them out of there. And then I'll just pick up reading off where, you know, I was at. So I can't pinpoint a specific book um but i know one well give me four of them give me four uh, of the, give me the give me four of the well, books look, i'm trying to look and i'm trying to think of all the names and i can't think of all the names i don't have them in front of me do i got one right here so it's an author i don't know if you you may have heard of him i got one right here okay i got two right here so this guy right here and he got so many books you guys can actually start there because i got a lot of his books but uh john gray you heard of him Oh yeah, of course. Okay, the man that created the Venus and uh, what is it? Hold on, men are from Mars, women yeah. are from Venus. Yeah, oh yeah, that's that classic. Book. When I tell you, I think everybody, even if you don't get all his books, yeah, get some of his books because he breaks down. He breaks down the science of men and women, and it's almost like I feel like until we understand the science of that, now we don't make adjustments, of course, but until we understand the science of that, I believe. We're not going to do the things like what you said. We're not going to love them according to who they are. We're going to always place the expectation because, again, when as women, we look at y'all and we expect y'all to kind of move like us, you know, like, well, you know, like with feelings. Okay, so you don't think nothing about that? You're like, no. Nah. Yeah. What? How come? You know, and it's like, how you don't fit? You don't fit. You act like nothing wrong. No, I do act like something wrong. I just don't act like it's wrong. Like you act like it's, you know. So it's like John Gray. Google him. His book, Men are from Men are from Mars, Women are from Venus. Those books are lovely. Yeah. Um, but then I went to do. I went to read a lot of self help books. So like this one book I got right here is called It's called I'll Keep It Shut. Talking about your mouth. Because as a woman, as you know how we get with our mouth. Yeah. So I had to start doing stuff again. I I, bought, I got some books that are uh, it's a book Tyrese and, and um, Rev Ron. Yeah, I yeah. got that book because you know trying. I saw I started getting books that that worked on me as a woman with yeah. you know my mouth, my attitude. The men are from Mars, uh, women are from Venus, so I could understand the difference with us. Um, like I said, self help working on me in general, and then I started buying books that was specifically about men. It's a TD Jakes book called men men something e emotions yeah 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 <laughs> Ooh, you got it oh so, I'm, I'm, I'm in my books i got some behind me look, i bought that and i'm like okay so i got three different types so one that explains our natural being and then one that works on me and myself and then another that's strictly for men so i can help understand them from you know a not so uh natural science set you know saying so all of that together, it's like I just it just started working on me. 
And I started, you know, gaining the knowledge again and then praying. Like, I know some people don't believe in the Bible or whatever, but whatever, whatever spiritual, whatever you do, but pray about working on you first. That it, it's going to start with you. You can't change the other person. And you're going to find it out when you get married. Yeah, right. You ain't going to be able to change them. But. <laughs> Well, I'm going to have that uh, men are from Mars, women are from Venus. I'm going to have that linked up in the description below. So anybody want to get that book? Yeah. Uh, what are three ingredients every marriage need to be successful? Mm-hmm. It's, it's your take, but just so, give me your three. Yeah, I, yeah. Have, I have I have a lot. It's, I, I just want to I want to pinpoint only certain certain three. Um, one of them, and and it's basically is is what I do with my brand a lot. I stand on it. Accountability is big. You got to have accountability. Grace. There's a book. Oh, look, pause on that for a minute. Grace. There's a book called Gracefield Marriage. Have you read that book? Yes. Oh, no. let me write that down. You said graceful. Grace filled marriage. Oh, grace filled. Yeah. No, never, that never book, even heard of it. I that book almost had me in tears. I was like, oh my god. Yeah. But yeah. anyway, so, yeah, accountability, grace, and this probably gonna be the eyeball of it. But I feel like you need to have your self care. Mm-hmm. So in your self care, I'm not talking about nails. I'm not talking about getting hair done. When I say self care for the man and for the woman, you need time by yourself. That ain't saying break up on your person, but I'm saying like take your staycations, take your stay, take them, get away for a weekend, you know, like get away and just rejuvenate into you. Cause at the end of the day, I feel like you still are two individuals. Yeah. I know we do, we use scripture and be like, oh, we are one. Yeah, but no. Like mm-hmm. let's let's not let's not make that that weird there. Yeah. You know, you're you're one in the spirit you're not one in the body so you still should have your own me time you still should have your own hey i get to go do this without my spouse needing to be there without me always having to have kids so accountability grace and having your individual self-care time i love that that's good and and that and that those vacations come with trust you know what i'm saying Bad. That's going that's going that's definitely going it comes with trust and it's definitely going to I want to say test your trust. Mm. But it, uh, test and build it though because it now for those who dealt with cheating and I try not to touch cheating on my platform cuz we you know I just try not to touch it but for those who dealt with cheating I I get you know it might be hard for you to let this person you know just go out just without you but at the end of the day and I made a stat. I don't know if you saw it <laughs> recently. I talked about micromanaging a cheater. Mm. If you don't trust them, if you feel like they're going to cheat again by going away on a, you know, staycations or without you or whatever, you're micromanaging a cheater. And there is something else that needs to be dealt with because if they are a cheater and they're going to cheat, it don't matter how much you micromanage them. They're going to find ways and creative ways to do it. So, you know, that staycation or, you know, going off, you know, even for a day, it ain't even got to be a weekend. Just, hey, this whole day, I'm just going to, it's just going to be me. I ain't going to, I ain't going to deal with no kids. I ain't going to deal with no wife or, you know, the husband. It's just me to myself. That's going to also show you, am I ready to trust again? Mm-hmm. Like, can I trust again? Or it's going to make you say, I have to let go. I got to put them in God's hands and I got to just, I got to let go. I stayed. I said I would want to rebuild it. You know, you can't put you can't put humans on the leash. Right. You know, so yep. Those are my three. I'm gonna stick with. <laughs> that's good. No, that's really good. Last question. What advice would you give to singles who desire to marry? The advice that they don't like to hear, focus on you. <laughs> yeah. Focus on you. Work work on yourself. Like I feel like um people feel like I need to be in a relationship to know how to be in a relationship, but you don't. Focus on your relationship with your family, with your kids, with your friends. Like the way you communicate to them, that's how you're going to communicate to your person. It does not change. The way you handle them, if you're always argumentative, if you don't want to listen, you know, if you listen to respond, not to understand, that's how you're going to do your partner. 
So you don't have to be in a relationship to learn these things. Like you as a single, work on you because you're going to learn the things you need to learn through your other encounters, your platonic, you know, relationships. So it's simple. What they don't want to hear, they don't want they don't like hearing it. <laughs> no, that's good. I, I feel that a hundred percent. Randy, this has been a phenomenal episode. Um yeah, it's going to be a hard act to follow because we got some more people coming. So you just didn't kick the door down. So we're yeah. going to be excited. So we got some more parts coming, more awesome guests. What's up? I feel no, I feel like I, I, this is light. This is light. This is light. I feel like I feel like we got to get in another topic because I'm, I'm ready to get into some, <laughs> some real, real juicy stuff. So I feel like I went, I went pretty light on them today. So Okay, okay. Well, you know, we got to do it again. We, you know what I'm saying? We're going to make it happen. We just connected like that. Um, Brandy, let everyone know how they can get in touch with you. Um, On all platforms. Um, I'm not heavy on Twitter like I should be, but all platforms. Like you should you can, be. Yeah. <laughs> you can type in. Uh, I'll be forgetting about Twitter. I'm just, I need. I need I'll to be messing with you. Go ahead. But um, conquering relationship. You just type that in. It should get to uh, get to. Uh, uh, you should be able to get to it. Um, I think it's. I don't know if it's constant relationships on TikTok or if it's Brandy Yates, but type in those two. Either way, you can get to them. If you go to constant relationships on Instagram or Facebook, it'll get you to all my other uh, social media sites. So. Awesome for sure. Well, I want to thank you for taking some time out of your day to discuss this uh much needed topic so you know we can help some folks out here and i also have all your information uh in the description below so all people will have to do is click the link um yeah so thanks again for being a guest and those who are watching this via youtube make sure you hit the subscribe button and share this with someone someone might be contemplating divorce you never know this can be the episode for you to help someone, if you are listening via podcast, make sure you leave a rating and review on Apple Podcasts. We'd we'll love to hear from you. Um, give me your honest rating. And we just out here trying to change some lives and change the uh, landscape of these relationships out here. So, And then, and then I will say just, just a bit, because I'm still in that mode where I feel like um, you can be transparent without, without really telling the world everything, because I feel like people don't really care just yet. They just want something to like throw darts at you. So anybody that's watching, if you really want to get deep and in, deep into like my story, like for real, for real, you can always inbox me and we can have a, you know, a deeper conversation outside of like, you know, a live video. You know, I just, I tell what I'm comfortable with telling because again, I have my own brand. So, you know, I try to protect people from coming and, you know, throwing shots and taking, you know, what they've heard and, and trying to knock me off my square. So, we can have side conversations if if you want to have a little bit more talk mm. all right brave parts community you heard it here so make sure you <laughs> go connect with brandy uh she is the truth her content is phenomenal uh she would not disappoint you <laughs> <laughs> this is sean heineman with special guests brandy yates all with right brave Park. yes brave yeah. community take care Hey, thanks again for watching another segment of A Scary to Remarry. I have so much more amazing content and some phenomenal guests as well. People who've been through a divorce, people who remarried, people who desire to marry. So much great content. So make sure that you hit one of these videos. It's somewhere around here. But anyway, go watch another video.